1980s are over. Ronald Reagan is dead. It's not the same Soviet Union. And so why do you oppose Russia? Tell me what you fear. What is it you fear about Russia? Russia is a bigger threat to your survival and your national interest than ISIS is? ISIS, as far as I know, Russia hasn't been killing Christians and raping the young girls. I haven't seen that yet. I haven't seen Russia burning down the churches in Iraq and Syria. Have you? No, ISIS is burning down the churches. And not a word from the Jewish community. All the shlemiels in the organized Jewish community, not one word about this. There's a very large Syrian Jewish community that is right now being protected by Assad, who is also protecting the Christian community. And you're telling me you want Assad to go so the Jews and Christians can be slaughtered? I have to think this through for you? Yes, I have to think this through for you. That's why I have a national talk show that's so successful. That's why every one of my last books has been a New York Times bestseller. That's why Government Zero will be a blockbuster, because I do have to think for you. That's my job. And I think I do a fairly good job at it. And again, if you want to talk about these topics, the phone number, there's only one open line. There's no open lines at 855-407-282. Let's begin with Jim on WABC, who disagrees with everything I've just said. Jim, go ahead, please. Hey, Mike. First of all, what I want to say is thank God for Vladimir Putin. He's the first person to throw a monkey wrench in Obama's plan and agenda. When you say that Obama is the worst president, um, maybe to us red-blooded, patriotic, compassionate Americans, but to Barry from Honolulu and all the fanaticals around him, the death-wish liberals that are around him, he is the most successful president in the United States history. Every move he's made that we've looked at as a failure to him has been a success. That's why when he addresses the American people, he has his chin in the air like Mussolini. Thank God that we're a compassionate society. Otherwise, when this is all said and done, he would wind up meeting the same fate as Mussolini. This is the perfect storm happening right in front of us. And Putin has finally thrown a monkey. I want to I wanna ask people listening to you how they cannot see the vacuity of this man. That in the midst of the most astonishing act by another world power he is invisible and says nothing he continues to raise money doesn't that shock even the most supine liberal into awakening to an to an awakening My, no i am one of no they won't they will never ever ever admit that they made a mistake in electing this fraud jim stay on the line you're getting a free copy of government zero i have my first copy in my hand it's a gorgeous book gorgeous i love it no borders, no language, no culture. I don't love what's in it, because it's pretty amazing what's in it. WABC, BJ, you don't like Putin. Tell us why. I think that uh, the larger question at hand is what will happen when Putin takes uh, the Middle East, as he's taken to Ukraine, as he knows and is very fluent in the language of war. And this green president that we have is a silly green uh, uh, conserver who doesn't know how to speak in the language of war. Uh, he has swatted uh, our planes, as you've said. He's playing three-dimensional chess, we, uh, uh, and Obama's playing checkers. And this was, reflects, if anything else, the importance of the Iranian deal. Because now you have Israel, who is at odds with the U.S. on what to do in this region. We could have had them on oh, the wait, same I disagree with you. I, disagree. I think that was a charade. The more I look back at the, the protestations by Netanyahu, the more I realize it was a PR stunt. Than, than anything else. Right now, Iran, excuse me, right now, Israel is coordinating with the United States, with Jordan, with Saudi Arabia, with Qatar and the UAE in a, in a joint command center north of Baghdad, uh, in, in, in Jordan, rather, on how to fight uh, Assad. Did you know that? Israel's actually coordinating with the United States and those other nations as we speak. Well, well that's, that shows the failure of our policy, though, Michael. We are no, it shows, first of all, it shows the lies coming out of the mouths of this government and the lies coming out of the mouth of Israel, by the way. I'm sorry to tell you. It's disgusting to witness this, that while ISIS has been raping and murdering its way across the Middle East, burning churches, killing Christians, decimating historically important sites such as Palmyra, which I spoke about before they took it down and destroyed one of the world's greatest architectural sites, Israel did nothing, and I kept asking why. You, have you listened to my show? You've listened long enough to hear me as the only one in the media who's asked, why has Israel done nothing against ISIS? Haven't you heard me say that for months now? 
Oh, several times at least. Okay, why am I the only one who said it? Because it didn't make sense to me. If Israel was the most powerful military in the Middle East, I asked myself, why were they not flying sorties against ISIS? Why didn't they decimate their victory parade of Toyota trucks? Why didn't we take out the Toyota trucks in the victory parade? The answer is because they don't want ISIS to go. ISIS was their factotum army in the Middle East and still is. Well, now finally Russia stepped in and they said, you're not taking down Assad. We don't give a damn what you say. We don't care what you do. Get your damn planes out of the way. We're here. We're here. We're taking over and go away. And what did Obama do? He's on a fundraising trip. He hasn't said one word. Instead, we heard from Lurch the Liar. Again, Lurch the Liar is going to give another speech in a few minutes. And they're weak speeches, by the way, BJ. They're embarrassing. Did you see the our defense secretary speech speak today? This guy, Yeb Carter, Yenta, what's his name? Yeb Carter. I don't know his name. Beverly Carter, Bev Carter. I don't know. what. I can't remember his name. It was the most limp-wristed, academic, bumbling speech I've ever heard in my life. And to top it off, he was wearing a pink tie. What is this with the pink ties? It's the tie of surrender. They're surrender monkeys coming out with pink ties. Okay, stay on the line. Government Zero goes out to you. This is the third hour. Phone number is 855-107-282. This is the hour where I say to my staff, come on, guys, one more hour. I say, you know, when the going gets tough, the tough get going, and they laugh. We talk to each other through Skype. And I say, you know, I'm built for work. I was trained to work because people say, how do you do this? How do you come on so strong in hour number three? Well, because I know how to work and I want to work and I'd rather do this than anything else on earth. This is the most important thing I could be doing at this time in my life. There's nothing else I want to be doing. Can you tell me anything that a man like me would be doing that would be more significant than this? Do you think I want to run for office? Do you want to think I want to be just another fundraising clown? No. I want to have an impact through my thoughts and ideas on the savage nation. That's all I've wanted to do for 21 years. And God has blessed me with this microphone and I intend to continue putting it to good use. There's one open line at 855-407-282. Be here or be nowhere. Join the savage nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Am I imagining it? Everywhere I turn on TV, there's a pink tie. Kerry had a pink tie. Defense Secretary Carter had a pink tie. The Stooges on Fox News have pink ties. It's a nation of surrender monkeys. What is going on with this pink tie business? Is there a holiday I don't know about? Is it pink tie, pink tie day somewhere? What is with the pink ties? Here's some breaking news that I'm sure is of importance to you before we go back to the Syria-Russian thing. Whole Foods to stop using prison laborers to produce food? Whole Foods will no longer sell food made by prisoners. Customers complained that they were uncomfortable with the fact that products were being made with inmate labor. So Whole Foods, being a good uh, uh, company, said that all such products will be off its shelves on April 2016. You see, prison laborers produce such items as farm tilapia. That's sewer fish to begin with, by the way. Goat cheese and farmed trout. Well, I actually eat goat cheese, but I got to tell you... Uh, when you have antisocial people putting together goat cheese, I'm not sure that they're putting goat cheese in the package. That's all I can say to you. Tilapia, I wouldn't eat whenever I go in a restaurant. I ask what kind of fish. When they say fresh fish and greens and shiny, what is it, tilapia? That, that's, that's sewer fish. Farm trout, sewer fish. So I really don't, I don't eat this stuff anyway. A spokesmouth said we want to make sure we're in tune with our customers' wishes. Whole Foods work with a company called Colorado Correctional Industries to source local products and ingredients? Oh, so they're using slave labor now to make fish and goat cheese? It's like China. I mean, this whole thing is eerie and icky. Actually, the only people who suffer from this will be the prisoners who are probably making a good living at it, like 10 cents an hour. How else are you going to make a profit in America, given the high tax rates and government intervention? Why not use slave labor? They're using it here. I mean, they used it in Nazi Germany. Maybe, maybe they should expand slave labor here in America. Then you'll have a real profitable company. You know, cut labor costs to zero. That's a good way to turn a profit. I mean, if you want to build a bigger yacht, how else to do it? Okay, there are people who uh, 
disagree, agree, disagree. At least one woman is calling out of the pack. Allison on KK, sorry, KKAT in Utah. Allison, welcome to the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Oh, I just finished Stop the Coming Civil War yesterday. You totally nailed it with Russia. You said Obama would do nothing, Russia would fill in, and look what's happened. The day after I read it, it's happening. Yes, and I'm sending you Government Zero because I now make statements in Government Zero about what's coming next. In that I can see pretty far ahead. And in my chapter, A Zero Military, I give you an example of the purge of the military and what Obama has in mind and where Russia fits into all of this. So stay on the line for a free copy of, of Government Zero, which should be out in a few weeks right now. Kern County, K-E-R-N. Brian, welcome to the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Thank you very much, Dr. Savage. You remarked earlier that uh, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, as the old saying goes. And I'm afraid that while that may be true, uh, in some cases, it's not true uh, in all cases by any means. And it's very possible that uh, grave enemies may have common goals and purposes in mind. And I'm afraid that's what we may be seeing in the case of Vladimir Putin. All right, so let, let's take your worst fears. Uh, he's going to take out ISIS. Let's say he does that eventually. But you're saying his grand design goes beyond that. And then how does that threaten us? That I can't prognosticate, Dr. Savage. Uh, I just have a deep... All right, well, by, by the way, uh, here's what I think. ISIS is such a threat to the world, to civilization. They are so evil that they have to be killed at all costs. And if that means joining forces with the devil himself, I would join forces with the devil himself to see that ISIS is eliminated from the earth. The Americans are rather uh, straightforward people compared to the Middle East. It's so Byzantine, it's hard to follow. And many of us think, what the heck are we doing there to begin with? Why are we involved in a civil war in Syria? Why are we even caring what Russia does? You look at the composition of the Levant. I like the new phrase, ISIL. You say ISIS, ISIL, I keep changing it. It's known as the Levant. Arabs, Jews, Alawites, Kurds, Imamis, Turkomans, Ismailis, Nusaris, Druze, Circassians, Armenians, Copts, Assyrians, Turks, Arameans, and others. Very complex for us, we in America. We can't follow it. And we don't know what side to take. We have no idea what's right or wrong. So we're being told by the major media and by the... Uh, followers of the Reagan School of Foreign Policy, which is at least 30 years uh, out of date, that Russia is the, world, is the world's greatest enemy. Now, it's funny that Russia was our ally as near as a few years ago until Barry from Honolulu uh, came to power and mucked things up and turned Putin into the world's worst person. It was Barry who did this. After, after the Cold War was over and the Iron Curtain came down, thanks to Ronald Reagan, we did very well with Russia. And all of a sudden, Barry misadvised as he is, no foreign policy knowledge whatsoever. All he knows how to do is antagonize race against race, class against class. And he's very good at that, by the way. Don't un underestimate his demagoguery. All of a sudden, Russia is our greatest enemy, not ISIS. Now, the last I checked, Russia was not raging across any region of the world, burning churches, enslaving women, uh, etc., and so on. I didn't see Russia doing that. I see ISIS doing that. So I say, let the Russians take out ISIS. Now, those of you who are of the, of the simplistic notion that Russia is not going to take out ISIS, that they're really there to become Assad's air force, that they really want to just support Assad for their own uh, you know, Machiavellian and national interests, I think you're mistaken. I think you will see Russia take out ISIS for one major reason. Because Russia's ally, Iran, also wants ISIS gone. Remember, Iran is primarily a Shiite nation, and ISIS is primarily the remnants of the Republican Guard, Sunni nation, Iraq, with foreign uh, maniacs who are basically uh, mass murderers and rapists, the lowest levels of all society, pick up the Quran, the next thing you know is they're out to butcher, rape, and slaughter. They pick up the lowest scum on the planet, and attract them from around the world, U.S., France, Africa, the flotsam.